Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, London, Harley Street. A gleaming Rolls Royce driven by an immaculately uniformed chauffeur glides silently past the consulting rooms of H.R. Camrose, FRCS. Nothing very unusual in this, you might say. London has more Rolls Royce cars than any capital in the world, and Harley Street more than its fair share of them. But there is something strange about the occupant in the back seat of this car. He is resplendently dressed as a postman. The car turns a corner and stops. The postman gets out, walks quickly round to the main entrance to the consulting rooms, and slips a cream envelope through the letterbox. But then he returns to the car and is driven away. Janice, an attractive receptionist, seeing the envelope on the doormat, picks it up. H.R. Cameras, if I see us. Oh, what a strange time for the post to arrive. And only one letter. Ah, oh, well. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel are handed an assignment which is not to be sneezed at. Ralph Camrose, as he was known to his friends, had the quiet manner of a seasoned surgeon. A large, distinguished man, he was one of the top specialists in the country. His calm authority gave every one of his patients comfort. On this particular occasion, he was examining the nose and throat of quite an old friend, Jules Farage, a well-known teller. Uh, open a little wider. Uh, 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 nothing wrong. Oh? I think you'll live. Yes, looks all clear uh, now. Are you sure? Can you afford to pay my fee and question my diagnosis? I can't afford to lose my voice in the middle of La Traviata. <laughs> no worry. I'll guarantee your ability to reach the top notes. Mm -hmm. Come in. A letter for you, Mr. Cameron. I'll just put it down there, will you? Now, Jules, I have this prescription for you. Mm -hmm. There. You are. Take some of that if there's any signs of reinfection. Uh, thanks, Ralph. I'm very grateful. And see that you make good use of your new voice. I'm coming with a small party to the garden on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. I shall sing better than I've ever done. Thank you. Show Senor Farage out, Sir Janice. Yes, Doctor. <laughs> Before he gives us an audition. Oh, no, no. You have to pay and pay the top prices to hear Farage sing. Uh, I go. This way, then. <laughs> As the door closed behind them, Ralph Camrose picked up the envelope Janice left on his desk. It had his name and address neatly and correctly typed upon it. Picking up a paper knife, the specialist slit the top of the envelope. There was nothing inside. He held it upside down and shook it. Nothing came out. Camrose stared at the envelope with a puzzled expression and then was suddenly seized by a most ferocious attack of sneezing. He began to clutch at his collar, gasping for breath. His eyes began to bulge. He tried to stand, panting for air, then slowly toppled forward over his desk, knocking over a table lamp. <laughs> Janice, hearing the noise, hurried in from the reception room. But by the time she reached him, it was too late. H.R. Camrose, FRCS, was dead. Oh, nothing like a drive in the country, Steve. 
Brush away the cobwebs, Mrs. Beale. Break with the routine? Commune with nature. Uh, streaming in the wind? Uh, the trouble is that's not the only thing in the wind. What else? Trouble. Steed, you've been holding back on me. Oh, well, I told you this was a mystery tour. It's time to solve the mystery. Well? We've been summoned to the present. Who? Mother's. Why? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Mrs. Beale. But when Mother says it once, he means... Uh... Sooner than that. Right. Then if Mother's going to put his foot down, you better put yours down on that accelerator, don't you think, Steve? Mother's rooms in top security were austere to the point of bareness. Everything was on a level with his wheelchair, including five different colored telephones. He came straight to the point, holding out a scroll to Steed and motioning to Emma Peel to take a seat. Well, what do you make of that, Steed? Came off the telex from New York this morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, what an upset, eh? Los Angeles Rams 24, Green Bay Packers 19. Not the football results. Halfway down. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Third ear, nose and throat specialist dies of unknown causes. Growing concern at the world clinics. Not our territory, surely, Mother? It is now. Look at the headline. Death of Henry Camrose, famous ENT man, expires in consulting room in Harley Street. Is there a worldwide epidemic, Mother? Well, a disease that chooses its victims too carefully for my liking. Find the antidote before it spreads. That's your job. Yes, first of all, find the disease. Precisely. And it won't be in any medical dictionary. How can you be sure? My nose is twitching. Right, that's your job. Get going and let me do mine. Yes? Mm-hmm. Working on it. Uh, John Steed and Emma Peel. Uh, they've been on the case for a full 30 seconds flat. Yes. There uh, should be a breakthrough any minute. Bye. Well, don't just stand there. Get going. <laughs> Never let us down yet. What? Mother's nose. It doesn't seem to have picked up much of a scent. Ah, well, that's our department. I'll see what I can pick up in Camrose's consulting room. And what about me as the female species? Well, you can visit an old friend of mine, name of Padley. He's another of these ear, nose, and throat specialists. Ask him if he knows any common denominator that links the dead men. Padley? That's right, in the book. I'll be in Harley Street if you want me. Meet for lunch, right? Right. <laughs> Nothing's been touched? No, Mr. Steed. I received instructions to leave everything as it was. Good. Body is slumped here. This envelope is in his right hand, eh? Curious. Stamp has no postmark over it. Nothing inside? No letter? No. Waste paper basket? Oh, there. Hmm. Oh, nothing. Curious shaped envelope. Ordinary paper won't fold up to fit it. Did you happen to see who delivered this? Well, the postman, I imagine. Although it wasn't the time of a regular delivery. I found it on the doormat. Special delivery, eh? Right. Recapitulating. Nothing in this room has been removed or destroyed. And Mr. Camrose received this envelope just before his death. Nothing in this room on this desk appears to have come from this envelope. And indeed, nothing fits it. Apparently not. So we're left with one inevitable conclusion. Well, the envelope was empty when it arrived. Whoever sent it must have been very absent-minded. I, uh, I think I'll hold on to this. Thank you, Janice. Mrs. Peel, meanwhile, had found the address of Mr. Padley... His consulting rooms were the type that were shared with other doctors. The board, just outside the reception, informed her that of Padley, Seaton and Herrick, Mr. Seaton and Mr. Herrick were out, but Mr. Padley was in. 
Mr. Padley won't keep you long, Mrs. Peel. Thank you. But if you care to take a seat, their magazine, thank you. Mrs. Peel moved idly over to the window and looked down into the busy street. She was just too late to notice a gleaming Rolls Royce glide up some hundred yards away and park at the curbside. Some minutes later, a postman walked swiftly up the steps to Padley, Seaton and Herrick and dropped a cream envelope into the letterbox. It was curious that on the way down, he passed another postman going up. The second postman removed his cap and scratched his head in amazement. Then he sorted his mail and pushed it through the letterbox. Mrs. Peel, who'd seen the first cream envelope dropped to the mat, was puzzled to see a second delivery in so short a time. The receptionist, gathering the letters up, started to sort them out, taking the ones for Mr. Padley into his office. Oh, the post. Uh, thank you, Georgina. Anyone waiting? Uh, Mrs. Peel. Ah, yes, John Steed's friend. Yes. Let me just clear a little of this paperwork. I'll ring you to show her in. Thank uh, you. Very good, Mr. Padley. Padley turned to the pile of letters. He started to open a few. They were mostly bills and circulars. Then he noticed the curious cream envelope with no date stamp. He picked up a paper knife and inserted it under the flap. Mrs. Peel and the receptionist, waiting quietly outside, heard a succession of very loud sneezes. Oh, good gracious, Mr. Padley must have a sudden cold. Suddenly, the door was flung open. Emma Peel rushed to his aid, but again too late. Padley died in exactly the same way as Camrose. Mrs. Peel, kneeling beside the body, slowly extracted the cream envelope from his lifeless hand. Friday to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.